Susan Rendon, and you're looking at IKTV. I'm Tony Redisford, and my guest on this edition of the program is Sir James Mitchell. Sir James, you have graced the presence of our studios, and you've brought me this booklet, which is your latest publication, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Ungovernable. And it addresses primarily what is now termed the roadblock revolution. Let me welcome you, first of all, and tell me what inspired you to write this booklet. Well, thank you for having me, Tony. I want to say in general that my political career began when I was 35 years of age, when I got into the parliament in 1966. I put in 35 years in the parliament. That meant I was coming up to the age of 70. And I did not want to serve beyond the age of 70. And I wanted to make sure that the party I created had some succession. I was always worried around in the Caribbean. Let's look at St. Vincent itself. Mm -hmm. Ebenezer Joshua had no succession for the People's Political Party, and it collapsed. Milton Cato, his political party almost perished if they did not have the coalition, have the coalition the union, yes. and, and change the name of the party and start all over again. Yes. You look around Eugenia Charles, her party went. John Compton had problems with it, his succession. You know, Eric Williams had no succession. I wanted to make sure that there was something. And when I was facing the last election, I did not want to run. It was at the party convention that they insisted, the party insisted, that I run one more time. This was in 1998 election. In 1998. I Which did not did. even want to run because then I had a heart condition. Now, in this book, booklet I put together, it's called St. Vincent and the Grenadines, The Ungovernable. That term came from the opposition. And that was my theme that I thought I should deal with that. Yes. And what are the results we have had of all of this roadblock revolution? One of the things, Tony, that nobody seemed to want to understand is what was my frame of mind when I had that problem. Let's of the talk, so-called let's, let's talk roadblock revolution. Let's talk about that. Let's well, talk number one, mm -hmm. let me say here, I have a section here on my heart condition. One day in the late 90s, I had a sort of vibration in my heart, as though my whole body was shaken. Weeks after one early morning, I received word from Italy that Valdetaro, the long-established shipyard company in La Grazia, Italy, building the Otley Hall Marina and Shipyard had declared bankruptcy after a lot of the works here were concluded. Yes. We had trained 33 Vincentians in Italy. The project was all set to go. We even sent a representative from the bank, young Dal Dalrymple, to go and study joint financing of project in Germany at the headquarters. And that very morning, I got word that British Airways had pulled out of the airline business. So these were two of your major, major projects, projects, major developmental projects. And, it took, Hall. and it took, yes, uh, it took toll on my heart. And this was Carib Express, I think, was Carib the Express airline. So right? same morning, you got news that both of these things had gone under. Both That's Italy. right. Yeah. And Tony, uh, when Dr. Rambasad told me I had to go and see. Now our Governor General, Freddie Ballantyne. Yes. I told them I was not going until lunchtime. And when they checked my heart, it was, I had atrial flood. I should have died. Yes. Because you mentioned my in the booklet that they didn't show you the, um, no. the, the printout, the, the, the graph. <laughs> um, it was 200 a minute. Yes. I should have died. So I went and I got my operation in the Jackson Memorial Hospital. And that's where I got the idea of naming our hospital 
Cato Memorial, right. the word right. memorial, it could have been Robert Cato, Milton Robert Cato, Cato Hospital, right. but I put in the word memorial right. in reflection of that particular experience of mine. So I was ready to go. That heart experience had hit me very hard. So you ran, you ran in the 1998 elections. The results came out, as you mentioned in the book, and as you know, Vincentians yes. know, where you got a one-seat majority, but the ULP managed to get the, the majority, majority of, of the popular seat. vote. That's right. Yes. Good. So that and created a sort of a tension and crisis. Right in the cabinet. Yes. You follow? A single-seat majority. And then... By that time, we had already done the studies on airport development in St. Vincent. Yeah. And there were three sites. The Argyle, up here. Yes, the kitchen. All here would have been bulldozed. Kitchen. Yeah. Kitchen, yes. Kitchen, uh, villa. And the extension of Arnesville. And the extension of Arnesville. I was convinced that the extension of Arnesville was our correct option. Yes. But you said in the, in, in the book about that when you went to the Q80s. You said somewhere in the book that um, you said, uh, are you going for the sensible option, they asked, during yes. our mission to Q8, meaning the Arnesville extension. To me, this was not only sensible, but it matched the engineering and scientific analysis. So you were convinced at that point that you, you, you had the sensible option. And I haven't abandoned that view. So you haven't abandoned that view. But my party was going somewhere else. You know? How was it split? Because you mentioned in the booklet that one minister at the time was promoting heavily the idea of kitchen, and somebody else, I can't remember, was it Jerry Scott, yeah. um, pr promoting the idea of, I can't remember if it was Argyle? Argyle, yes. Right, so you had John Horn who was promoting the idea of kitchen, and Jerry Scott promoting the idea of Argyle. And so you had a retreat? That's right to bring all this together and to see how the party should move forward. Tell me about it. And we gave them two months yes. to come up with their proposals. And nothing of any substance came. So I decided to proceed with the recommendations that's come out of the Caribbean Development Bank and so on to use the Canadian consultants to do the Arnesville extension where we could get another 2,000 feet. A lot of Vincentians don't understand, don't even know the geography of the country. And if you're driving up to Mesopotamia, you look down there, look back, you will see the whole length that is possible. Yes. Now, I am very happy for St. Vincent to have the very best that St. Vincent wants. I am not out to shortchange St. Vincent, yes. but I am trained as a scientist, I cannot abandon my scientific discipline. So the ministers were going along. So I said, okay, it looks as though they are ready to govern without me. So, so when I reached, yes. when there's roadblock revolution, I was already set in my mind that my ministers needed their own mandate. So you felt, and this is interesting because for the first time I'm hearing you actually express anyway, that <clears throat> even before the actual roadblock revolution, you felt within your own cabinet that there, there was some splintering. You started to feel unwelcome in your own party. Correct. So and it was time for me to go home. So that was, that was your feeling going into... Yes. Uh, and when we went, finally went down to, uni to um, Grenada for that meeting, there was this great organization in the defense of democracy. And I wanted to prove to all of them in that organization that they were a waste of time. The person to deal with was Ralph Gonzalez, not them. I wanted to demonstrate to them in Grenada that they were no use. So you, you felt that by taking Ralph Gonzalez out of the meeting, out of the session, going up for a walk on the beach in Grand Anse, completely diffused and made the whole group Irrelevant. Okay, irrelevant and insignificant. And that was deliberate. Deliberate. And the Prime Minister, Ralph Gonsav, is there today. Our meeting on the beach didn't take more than a minute. But what annoyed me, and one of the things that trig uh, m m triggered me this, to produce this, 
is the attack on my daughter Louise. And uh, they say, keep say, saying that Louise, I did a deal for Louise to get a job with Ralph. So was this being promoted? By That's nonsense. But At that time, Tony, Louise was not here. Louise was working in South Carolina for US dollars. She had a free car, an apartment and making US dollars when she told me. And then she had a second offer of a job to go to London to work in tax chambers. And she had done all this work in Oxford and offshore business, etc. When she told me she wanted to come back to St. Vincent, I was annoyed. And yet, that is the framework in which they think I did a deal with Ralph. Now, and they think the... I did. And what also is, how could I have been really doing a deal with Ralph when they keep harassing me, and I have had to spend a fortune and sell land so as to protect my name in this Otley Hall crisis. We, we'll get to that. But when you say they propelling this mystery, um, you know, the, what you call myth anyway, about doing a secret deal with um, the Prime Minister today, Dr. Gonzalez, is the they you're referring to members of your own party, or is it just the general public? What annoys you most? Was it the general public can speculate, but is it the members of your own party, the, you know, proponents of this myth, as you call it? Well, the general public includes members of my party. You know, they felt that I handed out something. But as I say in this booklet, they say that I made Ralph Prime Minister. Yes. But Ralph won a, a popular election. He was elected by the people. The only person I made prime minister was Arnim Eustace, and he made himself leader of the opposition three times. Sir so James, we're at the end of the first section. I want to pick you up on that daring statement that you've just made when we come back. You, you've said that you made Arnim Eustace prime minister. Sorry, yes. Prime That's Minister, correct. and he made himself Please leader of the opposition. I want to pull you out on that one when we come back from the break. You're looking at Unrendered, and my guest is Sir James Mitchell. His recent publication, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, The Ungovernable, is the focus of our discussion. More when we come back. Mm -hmm.